Dan, you got your coffee mug? You know, I, I do have my mug. Thank you so much. <laughs> These are Hopefully. available at the Vandal store. Thank you to Shelby for providing them to us. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. Well, I think. Do I have to, shall I hold it for the entire? Do I need yeah, to? Yeah, you have to hold it up right there. Yep. Just yeah. right by your head so we can see it the whole time. All right. Well, I think that Dan sent me a video earlier of some examples of his work and I will share the one longer link with you all in the chat box I will share that with you that's um, I'm assuming a composition that you did or uh, compilation Dan is that correct the well you were asking me you know what what kind of music I write so I right you know it's a lot of different types so I sent sent one more an arrangement that would be more listenable I guess maybe and then the then another piece that's so I think it would be really appropriate to start with the one you sent me the three minute one so we're going to start with that and then we'll move into the conversation um, and because I think this kicks off what you kind of have done and some of you may, may have seen this and some of you might not but go ahead and get a listen Congratulations. So long, farewell. Auf Wiedersehen. Bye. Okay. That was, that was kind was of a great. classic Zoom transmission, huh? Yep, that was great. So I also think it was a classic Dan Buckfish <laughs> um, compilation there. 
So tell yeah, us about if you, want, if you want a mashup, I'm your guy. I there's guess. Your, the, that was a classic mashup by Dan Buckbitch. And I loved, I was watching everybody's faces while we were listening to that. And everybody was smiling and happy knowing that it was one of yours. So, well, my, you know, my department head, Vanessa Seeler, this was her idea. She thought it would be fun to do something for all of our graduates and, and for all of our retirees. So many yes. of the, many of the former students out there would recognize all of those people retiring Pam Bathurst and Carol Padgham Albrecht, James Reed. Anyway, it was, it yeah. was fun. I like James Reed at the end walking away. So that's a perfect segue into our first couple questions as to what have you been doing during all this COVID quote quarantine and what have your, what is, I can't, what was your experience like, you know, this last semester as students um, moved to online and that sort of thing? What have you been up to? Well, what I've been up to is probably what many of my colleagues have been up to, which is teaching online. I've been lucky, you know, we get a paycheck, have yeah. food. Still get to work. Still get to work, have no complaints. It's been interesting for me to, to finally be online teaching. I've never done anything like that before. And, and so it's been, it's been, I wouldn't say it's been challenging. I would say it's been interesting, yeah. you know, as somebody who really doesn't do any kind of electronic communication to have to do nothing but electronic communication has yeah. been interesting. So I've, that, I've learned that a lot. Leads me into another question. Um, I you told me um, yesterday when we were prepping that you don't you've never used email before this year. Well, <laughs> I've, used email, I, I've used email before, but not very often. Yeah, and probably not on campus. And I think mm. students who are out there watching would be in shock to, to find out that I actually sent a student an email or replied to one. But it's, yeah, it's, it's been um, teaching all on email, really. Yeah, and Zoom. Lecture classes all on email. Have you had uh, Zoom meetings with your students? Or how do you instruct the students? I've had some Zoom meetings, but Zoom doesn't work very well. You know, in teaching percussion and drums and vibraphone marimba whatever moving quickly zoom doesn't always work very well yeah for that. so yeah. how do you teach a student music when you can't see them or really hear them face to face well they'll send they'll send me recordings okay of what they're doing or well in in my percussion studio with all of the percussionists they all have to do quite detailed lesson plans mm. and often i'll get two two pages of single spaced amazingly well written descriptions of what they've been working on so that i can call them and we'll have a phone lesson oh that's great that's fantastic yeah it's, it's been interesting it's not the same as one-on-one -on -one and being in the same room with a person but it's yeah it's maybe in a way better than zoom i, I don't know yeah, it's been an adjustment, I think. Yeah, especially for somebody who does such hands-on work as you. Well, and you probably live your life on Zoom now, right? I do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just like this, every day. Yeah, well, yeah. We, we have a lot of Zoom meetings, and they're, they're interesting, but, you know, you can't really read body language very well. No, it's hard, isn't it? Yeah. We had that talk yesterday. So, okay, let's go back to the beginning and let's talk about how you got into music. What started all of this? Well, I was, I was always into music. I, I grew up in my own, I guess, my own little world of sound. And so sound has always been interesting to me. And music has always been interesting to me, even though I'm from a family of basketball players in Butte, Montana, for, <laughs> for some reason. I think as it turns out, I have great uncles on the Buckfitch side who may have been music professors. Really? In the I, oh. I think so. So maybe it skipped a gem generation, but I, I've always been intrigued by sound and music. Very cool. From as young as you can remember? Right. 
you know, from be- before I went to school, certainly early grade school. Oh, that's great. My mom, for my seventh birthday, gave me a, a pair of bongo drums, little little baby bongo drums, and the great um, Stan Kenton recording, Cuban Fire Suite. And she said, learn to play along with this. So that's where I started. <laughs> and that started it all, huh? The bongo drums. I guess. Sure. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. So what inspires you to make music and do your compositions and... Um, the different mashups that you do? Hmm. Well, you know, could could be anything. Often for school, like like the piece you just played, you know, someone says, would you do this for me? And, you know, it's a fun problem to solve. And like my friends on campus in other fields, what what we do in our research is solve problems and so that's that was a fun problem for me to solve and Mm -hmm. much of the music i write here on campus has something to do with helping students understand some musical concepts so if i'm working on something in music theory or or ear training class that might be might need more emphasis i'll 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 write a piece of music for Mm -hmm my jazz choir or percussion ensemble or for a soloist that might might address that yeah so how many or people... I'll, I'll have students or colleagues who will ask me would you write me a, a a piece of music for my recital yeah that's how many pieces of music do you think you've written can you even estimate well s- certainly no good ones but... <laughs> oh, that's not true I actually I think everyone this, on here would disagree I, with that. I'm I'm in my I'm in my office on campus. Don't tell anyone. I think I have 28 file drawers of music. File drawers. File drawers. And they're probably this big, you know. So Well, they're the drawers are certainly more more organized than the rest of my office. <laughs> but the file, yeah. So that's a lot of files. That's a lot of music. I like to think those organized drawers represent my inner life, but I, I think that's a fantasy. <laughs> so uh, you've, you've talked about what inspires you. What is your process? What's your creative process? Like how do you start to finish? How do you create a composition or how do you create music? What's your... lots, of, lots of pages of notes. Yeah. You know, I've got a piano back here full of, Clipboards. Yes. And some of these clipboards, <laughs> like this, like this one, have you know, lots of a pages. lot of pages. Is that all some your of them music and some of them just writing, whatever? So it's notes, 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 sketches, notes. just constant. So how do yeah. you start? What's the first thing you start with? Well, it, it depends. If I'm working on an arrangement of Go Vandals and Pomp and Circumstance, I start with those two pieces, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then map map it out. Where's it going to go? Who do I, how do I work this in? And in this era of COVID-19 where we're we're recording on our cell phones, it's how do I make something where, you know, 30 different participants can each do their little little thing and send it in to our student Mika Woods who did a just a phenomenal job of editing that yeah so let's get into the fun stuff and talk about who you've worked with you've you are world renowned for your work and we would like to know who your favorite people that you've worked with are who you would like to work with if you had any choice what your favorite venues were Hmm. You know, my, my favorite people to work with, no one's really ever heard of. Although I will have to say that when Lionel Hampton was coming to campus all the time and I, I would get to write arrangements for, for Mr. Hampton, that was always challenging and, and fun. And working with Claudio Roditi at yeah. Jazz Festival, all the different yeah. artists who would come for Jazz Festival. You know, that's Amazing been artists, yeah. interesting. <clears throat> Excuse me, interesting. And, and I get to work with a lot of, of great p- 
people who seriously most most people would would not have heard of uh who do i wish i you know i always wanted to play drums for count basie really he's gone i can't do that anymore you can't do that anymore no it'd be fun to play drums for ella fitzgerald she's that would gone be amazing yeah tony bennett kind of still around but <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not on his call list <laughs> so what was the favorite venue you've ever played well I had a great time. I got to conduct and compose for the National High School Honor Band in the Kennedy Center. Oh, wow. And that was, that was fun on a, a lot of different levels. That's incredible. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. amazing. I know that you've traveled all over the world. What kind of things do you do when you go, um, go abroad? Well, most of the time, most of the time when I go, I'm a guest composer. Okay. Or, you know, talking about my music, maybe guest conducting my music. Uh, doing doing workshops sometimes on music theory, different pedagogical things, but mostly guest conducting. Off often, you know, playing playing drums, playing percussion, mm -hmm. so a little yeah. bit of everything. But I am super lucky because I have really had the opportunity to travel to yeah. a, a lot of places and see a lot of amazing musicians, amazing music. Yeah, that's amazing. Amazing who, venues. Do you have some favorites as to who you've accompanied? Or some memorable, maybe not favorites, but memorable? Well, playing for Chuck Berry was fun. Yeah, I, I imagine that was, yes. Yeah. That would be very fun. Whatever. <laughs> You're so humble. <laughs> well, you know, in, in actually in my world, when when you play an instrument you you get to accompany people all the time yeah you know that's one of the things you do is you know for for whatever reason you're you're an accompanist for 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 big names yeah that's great all right so for a person who never wanted to do that you know it's been kind of fun occasionally to get to do that yeah what i always wanted to do was write music yeah yeah, I know. I remember. I was reading when I did my little research about you. I noticed that you're you're not a you're not one to like you're not a public centered person. You don't like the recognition. You kind of, as we talked about yesterday, you kind of like being in your office. Well, you know, COVID nineteen has not been that bad for me. Really, yeah. <laughs> I get to be by myself. Doing I'm what married you love. to a saint. I, I'm doing, yeah. It's been interesting. Yeah, it's great. So I don't, again, a lot of people have not, a lot of people have had a very difficult time. And those of us on campuses have been amazingly lucky. Yeah. So uh, what, do, do, you, do you have any specific mentors or leaders that um, guided you throughout your career or anybody that you can remember that really heavily influenced you? Oh, ab absolutely. Absolutely. You know, growing up in Butte, Montana, I had great, great high school teachers, Jane Pascoe, Raymond Sims, James Driscoll, great English teacher at, at Montana State University, um, Carl Lobitz, Mary Sanks, Lowell Hickman, here at the University of Idaho, uh, Bob Spevacek, who brought me out here, William Billingsley, great composer and a mentor. Dorothy Barnes, I, I could go on and on. S still mentors everywhere, you know, in the in the music world, almost everyone you meet is a mentor in a way. Yeah, that's great. Um, if you had any piece of advice to give, I don't know if there's any current students listening or watching, um, what, what one piece of advice would you give to aspiring musicians or aspiring conductors or composers or how about aspiring anything? Aspiring anything, yes. Aspiring anything. Well, my dad used to tell me you should find out what you're good at and learn to like it. <laughs> and if you don't like it, I'm just, just well, find something else. I guess. <laughs> I <don't... laughs> find something else. Either, or, or I guess you could do the reverse. You could find out what you like and get good at it. Yeah. Yeah. 
So um, let's talk about your history at the U of I. So go back to the beginning from when you came here as a graduate student. And tell us about your history and your experience and your stories that you remember. Well, I, uh, a former professor named Robert Spavacek contacted me back in 1976 and said they were looking at the University of Idaho for a, a teaching assistant to start percussion ensemble. They'd never had a percussion ensemble on campus. And he was wondering if I would like to come to Moscow, Idaho. And in addition to that, I could study composition with William Billingsley. And that sounded like a pretty good deal to me. So I, I said, well, I'll come to Moscow for a semester and try it out. <laughs> and you've been here for how many years well, now? Well, 1976, <laughs> I don't know, do the math. Uh, let's see, I know it was 1977, so I, I don't, uh, I am not good at math and I can't do it that fast in my head, but it's been a long time. It's been so, a while. What about Moscow and the U of I made you want to stay? Well, as a composer, and again, that's always what I wanted to do. You know, I think I, I mentioned to you, Christy, that I thought I would go back to Butte, Montana and work for my dad in the clerk of the court's office and write music. That was my goal in life. Yeah. But Moscow and the University of Idaho has always had composition going on, due in large part for many years to William Billingsley, Bill Billingsley. But it's it's been a great place to be a composer. You can yeah. do all, within reason almost anything. So, what are your um, what are your memories? What are your favorite memories of being a marching band director for the Vandal Marching Band? Yeah, what what did I direct band from? I think I started my second year as a grad student in '77, and I think I did it to 1988. I you know it was so interesting because like many things I do I, I I never really aspired to do that yeah but it was it was fun I had a great mentor Robert Spevichek who you know did quite innovative things with marching band and all of his his systems that Spevichek Spev as we call him originated we're, we're still using to this day the way he teaches drill and wrote drill and so it was interesting to see that and it was a great a great way to uh, to work on my on my arranging skills mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and my rehearsal techniques. It was it was interesting. So it was a it was a great a great learning yeah. experience. Yeah. How many? Members? I took too I took too many chances though sometimes in marching band. <laughs> I think that's your claim to uh, fame, Dan. Well, quickly, I I. I thought it would be cool to do this, do an arrangement of a of an Aaron Copeland piece, and not not a piece like Appalachian Spring, but one of his tw one of his twelve tone pieces, which he didn't do for very long, for a variety of reasons. But th this piece was out there, <laughs> and I remember we performed it, and we we finished, and I gave a great big cutoff, and there was not a sound from the from the audience really you know and later next week or the a couple of weeks later i got a call from president gibb and he asked me if i would stop by his office and visit him and he was very nice to me he said you know i i'm <laughs> sure what you did was was good but what was it <laughs> was, would you would you ever think of like maybe doing an arrangement of something like strike up the band or something that we would all know yeah. so that that was a great learning experience. yeah i bet that was yeah but i think i think like you said just now that uh taking risks is one of your claim to fame but it seems well i'm i'm happy i am happy to experiment yeah. with large groups of people in public it's it and what you've done is absolutely phenomenal i mean i've i've gone to every Sometimes. holiday concert for the last 20 years you know and i see all your different arrangements and stuff and and you can always tell a dan buckbitch arrangement arrangement that's hard to say all one time can you? you can well, always tell. how how is that i don't know they're just kind of out there <laughs> <laughs> all right no i'm just teasing you but would um, you make me a, would you make me a t-shirt that says that that yes. would be cool I would love that. 
<laughs> okay, so we have, well, tell me one favorite, one just favorite student story really quick, if you have one that you can think of. Before we lead on into some questions from, from your viewers. A favorite student story. Wow. I don't know. You mean when I was a student? Either no. or that could well, yeah, that or or a teaching moment. Oh gosh. Hmm. Well what <laughs> yeah, I that that Okay, think you, about that. You, you caught me off guard, obviously. Yeah. Uh, well, there that. was a former student who uh, I won't tell you who this person was. That's okay. But he had keys to everything on campus. And I'm not joking. Everything. And so it, it was fun to be able to explore <laughs> different places on campus, <laughs> like like the roof of the administration building mm. or inside the roof of the administration building. He might be out there listening to me right now. He, he might, might still have those keys. <laughs> so not really a teaching moment, but an exploring the University of Idaho moment. What what better way to what, spend your time on campus, and right? And what better way to learn, right? Yeah, well, the, you know, we were talking about this yesterday. Some of the, most of the best times are not in class. Yeah, I agree. Yes, that's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, okay, we're going to ask some questions. This one is from Barry. It says, hi, Dan, do you have a favorite or and least favorite or challenging instrument to compose for? I love to write for most instruments, but I would, I would have to say that I, I love to write for violin. I obviously love to write for the vo voice. I have frustrating instruments to compose for. You know, I don't, I don't play cello very well at all, and I, I, this is detailed, it's worthless detail, but it's composer detail. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, it's hard for me to think of doing a down bow that gets me to the highest strings. So that, that's a different, that's yeah. like not worth going into. But. <laughs> oh, okay, so this one is from Marnie and it says, Dan, are you still- Marnie, great, <laughs> wow. Are you still submitting your compositions for commercial publication? Also, thank you for performing the percussion part on my composition for the very first drum, dance, drummers, dancers, and dreamers concert. Tr I treasure mm. that memory. Yeah, well, Marnie, we're still we're still doing dancers, drummers, dreamers. We didn't get to do it this year. You know that that came right at the start of the close down. So it's always a fun time. Yeah, always DVD a great always time. The best, yeah. I am not, because I would rather give give my music away to educators who want to play it. It was it was frustrating for a lot of reasons, not worth going into. I mean, I have a lot of published music. I I, I got um, I want to be careful here. I I got a little bit tired of dealing with publishers. I'm just going to leave it there. Okay, that's a good answer. Good answer. Um, from Kendall. Hi, Dan. What are some of your fondest jazz choir memories? Every day. Uh, yes. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I get to be in a room with nothing but students who want to be there. Yeah. Because, you know, it's not required. It's, it's absolutely, it's kind of, it's pretty unique. It's a lot of fun. I, I don't know what else to say. Uh, you know, we've had some great moments. We did the opening concert mm -hmm. for the All Northwest Music Educators over in, in Bellevue, Washington, about 15 years ago, which was a, a great experience. And, um, but I don't know, honestly, it's, it's every day. And it's, you know, it's been interesting to not, to not see all of those yeah. faces. Yeah. I, and uh, I, could, I could tell you where I've been doing that. I've been doing jazz choirs at the University of Idaho since 1978. Wow. And I can tell you probably where you stood in that rehearsal room. I know you can. The, your ability to remember names 
No, no. not names. You, Faces. You're still good, though, at names. I mean, look at all these people you just rattled off, you know, that you remember. Yeah, but I was looking at them, and their names were printed under their face. <laughs> no, I mean, like, your, your mentors and your you know, past teachers, even in grade school and things like that, your ability to remember and faces. And my daughter was in jazz choir, as we talked about yesterday, and she, she, you knew her and where she stood every time, you know, you knew. And there was, there was what, how many people? Over a hundred in each of those classes. And you knew every face and every, not maybe not every name, but every face and where they stood. And that, that's pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. Um, and I can't tell you how many students, when I was an advisor, came in and talked to me and said, my schedule has to work around that jazz choir. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take any classes that interfere with jazz choir because that's my priority. And it was what, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 1230 to 120 or 330. something? 330. 330 to 420. Yes, that's right. It's been that way forever. Yeah. It's interesting times, though. Because as many of my colleagues who are watching who are music teachers will, will tell you, doing ensembles, bands and choirs, it doesn't work very well with, with this pandemic, yeah. especially yeah. singing. It's very dangerous. Wow. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the, the rehearsal room where we would have anywhere from 100 to 150 people yeah is now rated for 10. Wow, really? How's that gonna work in the fall? It's not. No, no jazz choirs for the fall? No ensembles of any kind. No, really? Mm. That's really sad. Somebody said in the dome. Actually, no, I might be teaching music theory and ear training in the dome, seriously. Really? Mm -hmm. wow. Well, to be, because you, you probably have read about that that super spreading event over in Seattle that was a choir rehearsal, you know, it's. Yeah, I have. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's, that's a shame, but I guess it's the world we're living in at the moment. It is. The, I, I don't think the virus goes away because you're bored. I don't think so. No, I think you're right. I think it's going to stick around for a while. Let's see. We have another question from Lindsay. How did the U of I School of Music begin its partnership with Lionel Hampton? I went to a faculty meeting in the early 1980s and my colleague, Robert Spevichek, who was director of bands, said to Doc Skinner, Lynn Skinner, he said, Doc Skinner, I heard that Chris Gulhagen, Chris Gulhagen is one of our graduates, Chris is, I think, now at the New School in New York. But Chris, amazingly talented arranger and composer, Chris had been writing all the music for the marching band back, back in before I got here. Spevacek said, Doc Skinner, I heard Chris Gulhagen is playing trombone and, trombone and writing arrangements for Lionel Hampton. Why don't you try to get Lionel Hampton's band here for Jazz Festival? That's how that connection wow. started. That's incredible. What a great story. See, the, me the memories you have are just amazing. Um, from Jake, who's... Kusenfeld. I can't Jake, say how that. Are you? I'm sorry, Jake. But he said, 77 to 80 years were super fun. We taught Dan everything he knows. <laughs> that's, that's true. Uh, In many ways. Okay, so from Kevin, question for Dan. Composition, music theory, oral skills, jazz choir, percussion lessons, jazz band four, perform, create, which of these activities fills you the most? When you wake up, what is it that you can't wait to do? All of them. I, I, and I truly believe that. I, I, I believe that. You, I don't think you have one favorite. I think you have, they're all your favorite. Well, whatever I'm doing, sure. That's yeah. what I like about my schedule is when, when something starts to drive me crazy, I'm off to do something else. It's kind of fun. Yeah, and you have a lot of variety. The t yeah, we, somebody mentioned the t-shirt that we should make the t-shirt hanging. Let's see, let's see. Really missed DDD this year. Uh, from Diana, we have always enjoyed Dan's wonderful creativity and his work with Diane Walker. How was creativity fostered during your early years? Oh, well, when I, when I was a, teach, a TA here, and that would be 
starting in 76 and I finished in 78, spring of 78. Unlike these days, I was the only teaching assistant. And so I kind of had interactions with all of my, all of the faculty. And many of them would, would ask me to write pieces for them, write arrangements for them. And, and they, they were always nothing but in, encouraging. Well, not always, but <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> Somebody, and there's one question. Um, thank you for Dan from Janelle Baker. Thank you for all you have done for all of us. I first got to drum with you in sixth grade, and now I have a drumming son who is a freshman in high school. Wow. And from Kevin Wolfel. Hi, Kevin. Wishing you a happy birthday, belated, and thanks for such a fun video presentation you composed for graduation. Stay healthy. Thank you, Kevin. I hope you're doing well. Yeah. Thanks for being our department head for a while. It was great to see you more than just once a year. Okay, this one from Michael. How has Idaho's natural environment influenced your compositions? Would your music have been different if you'd lived and worked in, let's say, New York City? That's an interesting question. Well, when I think of the natural environment, I sadly don't, don't think of the gorgeous outdoor environment. I think of the natural environment of amazingly supportive mentors and colleagues and students and fellow faculty members who are always looking for something new that that's a great environment mm -hmm. and there are not many places yeah. that have that gorgeous environment no there are not <laughs> we live in a beautiful area lisa denolfo do you still perform the silk shiny stockings arrangement in jazz choir? Uh, I'm not sure what that is, so you might have to explain. No, because I think the lyrics, the, the lyrics I wrote to that great Frank Foster tune would not be considered appropriate these days. <laughs> so I'll no. I have to look at that again, though. I'll have, to, I'll have to fix those up. One of my my favorite memories of jazz choir and that holiday concert is the from the earth to the moon how did uh, uh -huh. how did that come about well i have a colleague who i teach with used to teach with in the summer at the university of new hampshire who had a part-time job at one of the nasa facilities as a recreation recreational choral director oh wow she asked me if I would do something for the for her choir for the 40th anniversary wow. of the moon landing. That's how that started. That's amazing. That, that mm -hmm. first, I can always hear that in my head, and it's one of my favorite pieces that you've done. And then I had people taking jazz theory, wondering what it would be like to have minor chords with sharp 11s and major sevenths, wow. and so that's, yeah. that's the other reason for that. That's it's it's really amazing. Um, from Kenton Bird. Please talk about, and this is a typical Kenton Bird question. Thank you, Kenton. <laughs> talk about the Humanities Fellowship and the origins of the Renfrew Colloquium. 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 Sorry. Miss. Well. Pronounced. When Kurt Olson, may he rest in peace, was Dean of College of Letters, Arts, and Social sciences i don't know if we called it that back then this would be this is 20 years ago 1999 roughly he had a program called humanities fellows and they would select three humanities fellows to do something and so i i was chosen along with michael o'rourke and from philosophy and rick fehrenbacher from english Mm -hmm. to be humanity fellows for that particular year and we we did a thing with with tools and how we as as humans use use tools of a, of a variety of kinds and we we had a big uh conference where we brought in some of the world's leading thinkers on on that topic and out of that we put together this colloquium series every Tuesday at 1230, where initially we wanted to visit people on campus in their labs or in their workspace to, to just have them talk informally about 
what they did. And that morphed over the years into the Renfrew, named after Malcolm Renfrew. Did we name it after Malcolm on his 100th birthday? Maybe. Yeah. Because Malcolm was a such a loyal attendee yeah. at this at this, but it still goes on. So every every uh -huh. Tuesday during the school year at twelve thirty, we have a different wow. presenter down in the Whitewater Room of the yeah. Commons on this last this last semester online, That's people great. talking about their their research and yeah, and their, yeah. That's great. I uh, we're we're at. We're at time. I'm going to ask you just a couple more quick questions. There's a lot of questions um, that we haven't been able to get to, so I apologize to everybody. Mostly about grades, probably. No. <laughs> have you turned your grades in yet, Dan? <laughs> I mean, actually, I have. Um, have you thought of doing any video game music ar arrangements as that genre gets more um, popular? No. Okay. I don't know anything about Solid in that world. I know there's there's a lot of great video game music. In fact, we have a lot of students writing some really interesting video game music. And but I I don't you know that's that's not my world. Yeah, yeah. And somebody wants you to tell like um, somebody wants you to tell a quick story about Spencer when he was a student. Spencer Martin. Yes. What 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 story? Uh, any. Spence was a per Spence was a per Spence was a percussion major here, as in, when he was an undergraduate, he got a master's degree. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know that I have any funny stories about oh. Spence. Spence was just was a good student into into working hard, doing a lot of different things. <laughs> kind of like what he's doing now as a faculty member. <laughs> and somebody said the best story he wouldn't want us to know, but I think we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> I actually don't have any stories like that about it. Um, Mike Spence. Peterson says, my niece was in jazz choir and sent a picture. Amazing. When I got the great opportunity to play drums in jazz choir, it was the first six people and you on piano. Look at it now. Congratulations on your success. No one deserves it. Mike, it's, it's so great to hear from you. I think of you quite often. It was great to have your niece in choir. It was interesting. Yeah. It's always fun to see these generations. I have grandchildren of some of the first children I had, or first students I had. That is in incredible. Choir. That yeah, is it's, incredible. I guess amazing is the word. Amaz it is amazing, yes. It very much Sad is. for me, really. No, it is not. It's, we are glad you're still here. <laughs> and we are lucky to have you. So I'm going to wrap it up because I want to be mindful of everybody's time and yours. So I am going to um, unmute, or everybody can unmute and talk to Dan as long as he wants to stay on. Um, I just want to thank you so much for participating in this interview with us and taking the time out of your schedule and doing this for us. I know that you are a very beloved member of our community and it's so wonderful to talk to you. Well, Christy, thank you so much for doing all these things. You've, you've got these interviews and what? You've got cooking classes and- We have a lot of things. We have Thursday A lot of things going on trivia and cooking classes and wind down Wednesdays. We have a lot of things going on. But but these are, to me, these are just close to my heart because we get to talk to people that are just such amazing University of Idaho graduates. Well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. It's fun to see everybody. We'll yeah. See so if I can handle these questions. <laughs> All right, I'm everybody unmute. You can talk to Dan as long as he's willing to stay on. And then Dan, you just let me know and I'll end it. We'll give maybe what how long do you have, Dan? Ten minutes? Whatever, I'm here. <laughs> it's the summer. Okay. How long do you have? You're you're the one with the schedule. I'm gonna give it ten minutes. Christy will give us ten minutes, okay. So what do I have to do here? Anything? Nothing. Everybody just unmute and ask a question. Unmute? Am I going to see who yes, it is or do questions. I have to hit this uh, gallery view? Hey, Dan. It's Dawn. Hey, Dawn. How are you? So good. So good to see your face and your smile. And <laughs> oh, my God. And I'm sorry. I thought it was 5 o'clock and I had a prior commitment, but I'm so glad to at least catch the last half of the class. <laughs> yeah, it was fun to see you. Was that, was that last summer you were through? Oh God, <laughs> 20 years ago. No, it was. <laughs> oh, I think. yeah, through last summer. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was a good right. time. 
Hey, are yeah. you done? I do have it recorded. So if uh, you want me to send you the video, I will. Oh, I'd love that. Happily do so. Yeah, thank you. I, I had a prior engagement, but so if, Dan, if you already answered this, that's totally fine. But I was just curious, you know, just in the context of everything that's happening in the world, just to hear some of your wisdom in general to everyone. I'm like big open-ended question, of course. <laughs> Huh, wisdom. Mm -hmm. None, although <laughs> you certainly, well, I, I'm going to say this. It's been interesting for me to observe students forced to get to know themselves, you know, because in our, in our, in my world, a lot of what we do is one person in a room, you know, you're in a room by yourself, learn really learning to understand yourself and i think that's what one of the positive things that comes out of this is you have to figure out how to like yourself i guess get to know yourself mm. Aww. <laughs> yeah. Thank Aww. You. Oh, i just love you so much <laughs> thanks dan yeah. Does anybody else have anything? I see lots of familiar faces on here. This is great. I see John Gaffney from Washington, D.C. Hi, John. Hey, John. How's it been out there? Well, uh, you know, it's it's been interesting. Um, lots of cabin fever, but otherwise things are, are quieted down a little bit from this time last week. Are you close to all the action? A few blocks away from from Chinatown and a few blocks farther than that from the White House, but, but pretty close. Yeah, about half mile. Wow. Well, thanks it's great for, to hear from you. Yeah, thanks for joining thanks us. Is anybody else? Hey, hey, Dan, this is Nick, uh, Courtney. Hey, Nick. Hey, question. So, you know, I teach online right now, which is crazy for middle school. Um, wow. What do you suggest for teaching percussion online as you've been doing it? Because it's easier for me to, like, suggest a lot of things for, uh, like, like, instruments that are not percussion you know, but percussionists are the ones that are struggling the most, I see. You know, I, I got an email from a teacher, former University of Idaho student named Ryan Dignan. Do you remember yes. Ryan? Did you ever yeah. know Ryan? I, yes, I met Ryan, yeah. Ryan Dignan is up in Sandpoint. He's in oh, okay. Sandpoint Public Schools, and he's doing tons of online middle school percussion work, and he's got a lot of it videoed already as lessons ready to go so get a hold get a hold of ryan he really knows oh, okay. how to do that Perfect. ryan dignan well yeah melissa's know. parents live by sandpoint so okay well yeah or send you know send me an email dbuckfitch at u idaho and i'll i'll forward you ryan's stuff and it, it's, and it it's, won't be somebody in the office replying to me to your email it'll be you like <laughs> sorry maybe <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, Dignan's doing some really interesting stuff. He sent me a number of videos. Cool, thanks. That you can just turn on and go. So somebody named Camille Blackburn. I don't know if she's still on here. Camille, are you Hi, Camille. Here? How are you? I'm here. Hi, Dan. Great to see you. Great, she, great to hear you. To I can't see you, though. That's okay. I can hear you. <laughs> she wants to know how much longer she should keep teaching, which I thought was kind of a funny question. <laughs> Well, forever, of course. Yeah, till you just can't anymore, right? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Not being able to teach didn't stop a lot of people, so keep going. <laughs> yeah. I love seeing all these smiling faces, Dan. Can you see everybody that are so happy to see you? It's just so well, fun to see all these smiling faces. They're probably all drinking. <laughs> <laughs> well, that might be, or it might be, wait, they might be waiting for Thirsty Thursday. I don't know. Hey, Dan. <laughs> I just want to say, uh, you know, two short years. That, that sounds like Kevin McDonald. Is that right? It, it is. It yes. is indeed. It is indeed. Uh, Dan, two short years with you in Idaho has continued to shape my teaching for the last 20 years or so. And I just want you to know that at Wellesley High School, we blossomed a choral department up of, to about 300 singers that do a lot of your jazz choir one pieces. Uh, Johnny One Note is a, a, a request every single year. Wow. Uh, 
but we've done you know kevin i worked with i worked with one of your students at the university of new hampshire last summer ah i wonder which one that was but she sang uh, soprano she sang soprano in jazz choir i am not sure which one that would be but the question that i really have for you is have you continued to develop new theory and oral skill materials because i'm still using your books from way back when and what would the best way be to get the new music theory materials that you've created? <laughs> Good question, Kevin. Well, send me an email and I'll, I'll scan them to you, Kevin. But All yeah, right. I probably what you're using is, you know, th those things get revised constantly. You, you were part of it. Like many of my friends who were, were undergraduate and graduate teaching assistants in those classes. So it's, it's still getting refined. Yeah. Fantastic. But yeah, send me an email and I'll, I'll send you some new arrangements too. Yeah. Right. Thank you. And I just want to say thank you because between real jazz, the real jazz choir, jazz choir, one stuff, the, the theory and oral skills, I use your stuff every single year. And wow. And, they, and you haven't been fired. No. And, <laughs> And every single one of my students knows your name. So thank you so much. Wow. Well, thanks for telling me, Kevin. And great to see you. That Same. is fantastic. All right. Uh, thank you. Okay. Got to read. There's a comment down here. Oh, very nice. They said this, this was just a note to me personally, but it said she wasn't a music student at the U of I, but it was fun hearing stories and reminiscing. I was able to privately connect with an old friend who was a part of this Zoom. So she enjoyed it and she wasn't even a U of I student. <laughs> wow. That's amazing, huh? See the impact you have, Dan? I, I guess. Does anybody else have any questions or comments for Dan? I do. Hey, Don. Who's who, where, who, oh, Joe? Yeah. Okay. So first of all, Dan, with all the craziness going on in the world and this virus and all that, how are you keeping? Are you well? Thank you so much, Joe. Great to hear from you. Yeah, I'm doing great. I'm to a certain extent kind of in my element. You know, I, I spend a lot of time by myself. I get to write a lot of music. Other than that, I don't see students or have rehearsals. It's, I, I, am, I am reading a lot of books and I'm, I'm having a great time. How about you? Life's good for you? Where are yeah, you? Yeah, not too bad. I live in Corvallis, Oregon now, and I'm halfway, I would say about halfway through a PhD in chemistry here at OSU. Yeah, so things are going yeah, well. Yeah, because I knew you were off into chemistry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so uh, on that note, actually, first of all, thanks for the shout out for uh, the Renfrew Colloquium. Uh, I never met Malcolm Renfrew when I was there, but, um, you know, all the, uh, all the chemistry professors I ever worked with, you know, sung his praises. Um, but you know, my second question for you sort of segues off that. So what can people with music degrees who are, you know, nonetheless going down a different way, like chemistry or biology or science or engineering, whatever you name it, what can people like us do to make sure that, um, you know, the arts are recognized and appreciated among people in our fields? What, what can we do to help spread the good word, I guess? Go, go to concerts. Anytime there's live music, you know that, that you you think is going to be fun to go 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 to the concert. I, I think that's the best thing to do. Yeah. Thanks, Joe. Sorry I didn't get to the, your question while we were in the official interview. Oh no worries. All right. Anyone else, Jamie? I see you. I see you. <laughs> Hi, Jamie. Uh, lots of people. Anybody have any other questions or comments? Hi, Hi Dan. This is Joel. Okay. Hi, Joel. Joel Pauls. Hey, Joel. I've got uh, two of your current students here with me. Hey, Dan. And my uh, my parents, I think, were watching earlier also from Florida. Oh, wow. And we just enjoyed it. Hello uh, to your parents in Florida. We're still here. Yeah. Wow. So we're, uh, we're just kind of hanging out down in Lewiston. Uh, I'm just about, uh, just about finished with school. I've got one more week of students student kind of contact this week in terms of uh doing grades and <laughs> wrapping stuff up but definitely yeah one it's the, been interesting one of the strangest and most interesting years of teaching ever yeah absolutely yeah 
it's been fun for me to get to know students online and find out how much, I better be careful here, how much more mature they are sometimes in their writing than, than in their, you know, I'll have some Zoom meetings and it's like sometimes like junior high school. Not, not that I'm against acting like a junior high kid because I'm sure my colleagues will tell you that's what I do in my faculty meetings, but it's been fun to read, you know, these amazingly well thought out lesson plans and, and thoughts just, just about, about their classes. That's been very interesting. There's, there's something fun. really positive about having to be responsible for your own learning, huh? Well, yeah, because aren't we all? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Anne Yil Oleman, sorry, sorry if I'm butchering names. Good memories of playing a spooky piece of yours with flashlights in the admin auditorium around Halloween 1985. Oh, yeah, voodoo. Oh, my gosh. Oh, voodoo. I remember that. Yeah, I wrote that piece for the Idaho All-State Band in 1984. Yeah. They refused to pay me for it. Oh. Oh, yeah. That's well, we, well, it was kind of weird. Why would you write a piece called Voodoo done in the dark for an All-State Band? Who's crazy enough to do that? And then Mary Ellen Rose Witt says, thanks, Dan, hey. for wonderful experiences in college. I think of you when I'm making worksheet, worksheets for my students or ski mountaineering. Simple isn't easy. That's right. Are you still using a straight edge? <laughs> I do. They have them in the teacher's lounges, or I guess hey, the where, staff rooms. <laughs> Mary, where are you now? I'm in Seattle. Oh, wow. And, and so who are you working for? Uh, I'm working for Seattle Public Schools. Oh, okay. And what grade are you working with most of the time? Uh, right now, K-5. Wow. Fun. Fun to hear from you. Yeah, you as well. <laughs> I'd love to see all the... I'm looking at everybody's pictures. I see musical instruments in the background of everybody's pictures. It's really kind of cool. Hey, Dan. Yeah, I want to... Sorry. That's okay. I just was going to ask you, do you play like almost every instrument? Is there any that you don't play? Most. You play most, yeah. No, I don't play most. Oh, you don't play most. I thought you would play most. No, I can, I can make sounds on most of them. <laughs> I kind of know what to do, but I, I would claim to play very few instruments. Really? No. Even the ones I teach. So. <laughs> oh, you're funny. All right. <laughs> Anyone else? Any last comments? Hey, Dan, this is Susie Skobdahl. Just wanted to say hi. Thank you. Susie, how are you? Good. Yeah, I got to, I got to teach on Zoom, too. It was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Zoom, is, Zoom is crazy. I'm, I'm scrolling through now to just see everybody who's, who's on here. Yeah, I think I there's a lot of choir members on here. We, a all, lot of, we all miss choir, so. Yeah. Oh, wow. There's... <laughs> Wow, we I want to be careful. I'm going to miss choir. somebody. If I start going through all these names, I'm going to, it's so cool to see. Hey, Dan, I have a great idea. Who is this? Christy. Oh, Christy, sorry. All right. <laughs> That's why so, I didn't recognize your name. Yeah. So, uh, we, you know how they have the alumni bar marching band? Why don't we have the alumni jazz choir? We can well, probably for the same reason that they don't do the alumni band marching band anymore. <laughs> they do, though, don't they? Sometimes. Uh, I see them yeah, every year at the homecoming parade. Well, they did it, they did it last year at homecoming because it was the... Oh, the... Some anniversary. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. It was like, we could do a Zoom uh, class for alumni. I don't know. Zoom is... It's annoying, though, because by the time I get to everybody, you know, I just... I don't have a computer. I have an iPad mini. Yeah, yeah. So you can imagine <laughs> what it's like oh. seeing one what it's set up for 24 photos on a, you know, I'd have to do this to see who I was, <laughs> to see your name. I can see, I can recognize most of you. That would be There's really hard. Look, yeah. I think I don't know. Hanging on one. Zoom does not work. No, it well, was not. No. Yes. Yeah, while you're struggling, I'm going to help you. No. There's one that says Jim, but it's not. It's Leslie Richardson and her Jim. Hey, hey. What? Hey, oh, Leslie, how are you? I'm good. Yes. It's raining on us on the Oregon coast, man. Oh, yeah, Manzanita, is that where you are? 
Yeah. Oh, wow. Ding, yeah. ding. You win the prize. And, and yeah, you, and you tell, have a bad memory. Dad, thanks, tell your dad thanks for the cool book he gave me for my birthday. He's wow. always thinking of me. Yeah. He does. He thinks you're pretty special, Dan. Just, well. Just, just yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. You All get right. to be special by staying around the same place forever. That's, what you, that's, <laughs> how it that's why people love you. Huh. Is that it? <laughs> that's one reason. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there's many more. All right. Well, we're after five, and I want to be mindful of everybody's time and yours. So, if Well, they, everybody, it is so great that you would yeah. would tune in and i know you're going to be shocked by this especially elizabeth last who sent, sends me emails often and i don't i haven't responded to one for like years now but send me an email at dbuckfitch at uido i'd love to hear what you're doing yeah all right well thank you so much everybody for coming and participating and again thank you dan it was yeah christy thank you so much for memorable, saying memorable and i am very grateful to you <laughs>